I don't particularly care for them myself. <laughs> Thank you for that. You see my yes on yes. Yeah. Okay. We're ready. Okay. Okay. We uh, resume our meeting. Um, and uh, down to mayor council matters. And the first is uh, countywide assignment reports, and then after that, subcommittee reports, if any. So, any who would like to go first? Uh, I'll go. Yeah, sure. Go so, um, I had a couple of countywide um, meetings. One was uh, with um, the Hart uh, uh, um, Board, and so the Hart Board is uh, we've. Um, Hired uh, Olive Grove consultants, and uh, here's the the packet that or, or the the feasibility study that they're putting together. And so hard is um, their mission is to raise funds for affordable housing, and they've uh, they've put forth a very ambitious plan to raise 200 million dollars. And uh, they've been around for about 20 years, maybe 25 years, and they raised. I don't even think they've even raised $10 million. Maybe, maybe it's close to 12. And so here they have this ambitious plan of 200 million. But so they've hired this consultant, um, Olive Grove, and um, uh, so far they've they've helped the board um, raise uh, through grants uh, $15,000. They're working on another one that's uh, about $200,000. Their um, uh, their consulting fee is 75,000. And uh, we took them on board because um, not only it, it, you know they they have um, you know a great um, you know a, you know a great reputation, but they've also implemented or implementing a plan where their fees will be paid through the helping uh, through helping Hart to raise money through through grants. And so uh, I think it's a great way to uh, you know take on someone who says, yeah, we can we can do this. And we're going to help you raise enough money to pay for our fees. So, um, yeah, I'm really excited about the work that these guys uh, are proposing, and um, it'll it'll really help cities in San Mateo County to um, to have funding for affordable housing. And then, uh, then I was I had a CMAC meeting, and in that meeting, one of the um, uh, one of the presentations was um, in regards to uh, applying sustainability um, standards and, and uh, operations to not only cities but also to schools, mostly through uh, uh, doing solar. And uh, there's some great opportunities for school districts to partner with um, the county uh, to to implement and. Um, uh, you know, I couldn't find my packet because I, I really wanted to, you know, to, to highlight some of the things that they're doing. But it's um, it's something that that w will be on our agenda for the two by two, and uh, because um, it would be great to get this money to to help retrofit part of our buildings in in the school district, and um, get money to um, to. Uh, put in solar panels, um, and a lot of these programs, you know, if done correctly, and there's this, this this special type of funding where you can basically do this work uh, for free, or the amount of money that you save over the life of this loan that um, has zero interest will help pay for um, uh, those those improvements. So um, there's some pretty cool things out. There. Yeah, I think this is part of the state state grant. Funding yeah, yeah. Is, is what it is, and, okay. and uh, from what I understand, all the schools in San Mateo County participated, including Brisbane, in the presentation for this, and it's uh, um, supposed to be where you know all the schools ha have this money available. I think it was so. Oh God, I can't think of what the figure. It's an ob obnoxious figure. I mean, it was you know it's crazy a, a lot of money. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. Like, yeah. But it's you, but you gotta be but you gotta be shovel ready. You know, yeah. you gotta have those plans in place. Right. And so like uh, anything else. It's yes. <laughs> no, for yeah. sure. So, yeah. That was it. Okay. Thank you. Jerry. Um, I attended a library JPA meeting today, this morning, and uh, they approved their interim uh, a updated budget, which not much changes. And then they also discussed the the JPA organization and the donor funds, which is the excess funds that uh, three of our cities in the JPA have and how that they could change how this the entire library system may be changing um, as far as the agreement for those donors funds and how they are spread out through the community or given back to the donor communities so that was the big discussion and I don't think any decisions were made but um, interesting how the San Mateo library system works and how it's funded through property tax the cities and how it's implemented throughout the system. Okay, thank you. CCAG Clark? No, I, nothing? It was, yeah, well, I didn't have a CCAG meeting. That was last month. Mm -hmm. That was uh, October 9th. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I already reported on that. Right. But that was, you know, with PG&E. Right. That was one of the things too, was the funding. What Cliff was talking about too, mm -hmm. with the schools. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any uh, subcommittee reports that we haven't touched on already on the agenda and so forth? Nope. No. No. Uh, you know, there is one thing I, I do want to mention. I, I was at the Council of Cities dinner mm -hmm. in in Millbrae, and so um, Carl uh, Gardino, who is the president and CEO of uh, the Silicon Valley uh, Leadership Group, was the guest speaker. And so um, after the, the, the presentation, you know, we had a little chat. You know, the, the number one concern of, 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 um, of businesses in, in San Mateo County is affordable housing. So, you know, when I was looking at this, I thought, oh, yeah, that's right, I forgot I had, you know, I was at that presentation. So, um, you know, another thing that, that, that Carl does is that he's the race director of the Turkey Trot, which is the Silicon Valley Turkey Trot race, 5K. Um, in um, Los Gatos, I think it is, or maybe Mountain View. Anyways, th this race, he's, he, they raise a million dollars, over a million dollars for um, these these various um, these four nonprofits. One of it, one of which is the um, Harvest Food uh, Bank. And um, so we talked and exchanged a couple emails, and and so um, trying to arrange for him to come to Brisbane and and be at our um, economic development. Uh, subcommittee meeting and looking at ways to, um, you know, as, as we look at, you know, the charrette, you know, and looking at Crocker, Crocker Park and, and Sierra Point, you know, are there opportunities um, that we're just not aware of because we're in Northern California or Northern San Mateo County and, and Little Brisbane, you know, are there opportunities where um, perhaps we can get some recognition from uh, folks that are um, part of this Silicon Valley leadership group. Okay. I worked there for 32 years. <clears throat> Trust me, some of the stuff that they got down there you don't want here. <laughs> uh, no, he, he, well, exactly. You know, but, uh, you know, it th I think it's it's good to to know that, that we do exist and that there is opportunity here in, in, in Brisbane. Yeah. Um, you know, especially, I think, you know, out at Sierra Point. Um, sure, oh, yeah. people drive up and down 101, and they know that we exist. But y you know, I think y you know it'd be good to you know to be able to you know bring some folks in that um, uh, you know that that understand funding and uh, you know can make projects happen. Yeah, it's kind of part of what we had um, realized, I think, in the hotel study. You know that the businesses that we want out there should be more of the corporate type headquarter businesses that would be able to anchor not only there but supplement another hotel. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, absolutely. 
Okay. That's good. Uh, move on to the uh, Mayor's Diversity Award honoree, and I think Clark, you attended that dinner. No, I didn't. You didn't? <laughs> I was I was planning on attending. Ooh. Yeah, but what happened was uh, I was up in Northern California and couldn't get back in time, and didn't. So I had called Sherry. I had some business to take care of up there. And I called her the day before. I said, Sherry, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to make it back in time, but I'm going to try my darndest. But, you know, if I don't wrap up before 12 o'clock, I'm not going to make it back. And I didn't finish till 3 o'clock. So Ooh. it was at 6 o'clock, and that's a three-and-a-half-hour drive. At that point in time, it's probably four-and-a-half hours. <laughs> so... Uh, we had already kind of pre-planned it. Uh, I don't know if you'd call Cliff, but <laughs> yeah. But uh, we got a hold of um, um, I can't think of his name right now. Jorge, yeah, Jorge Jaramillo. Yeah. So I was thinking that um, what we could do is uh, maybe later on in a month is bring Greg, but also the local AYSO. Uh, coaches and stuff here and then recognize them here also so you know. was he recognized at the dinner or he was he was yeah okay he was but I wasn't the presenter okay all right <laughs> do we have anybody there no no okay <clears throat> no, so do we want to say anything about the, the honoree or because I, I don't you know great no I don't know him uh, I may know him by by sight, but yeah. not by name. Okay. I haven't matched the name up to. Uh, I don't know if he's a Brisbane resident. Or anything. I don't know that either. But we have information from him. I mean, all I have is what they presented to us. So. Okay. Yeah. Do you have that? I do. Okay. But you know, I think it'd be appropriate to bring him back. It, it you know? sounds like a, that's a better way to go. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We'll do that. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, um, complete street safety committee applications, Sherry. So as you probably recall, we set October 30th as a deadline for submitting applications to serve on the complete street safety committee. And I received two, uh, one from Dolores Gomez, who you all know, and one from Christina Zane, I believe I'm reading that her handwriting correctly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, we have it's a it's a committee that has up to seven members on it, and it, we started off with seven members. We now have four due to three um, resignations for personal reasons. So you could choose to appoint these two or set interviews, whatever you like. Motion to appoint both of them. <laughs> Second. Further discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Done. Good. Glad to see Dolores back on the committee. Yeah, me too. <laughs> yeah, and, and welcome to uh, you know, Christina. I mean, right. being in town for only five months, yeah. Yeah, new homeowner, and yeah, we're really wanting to get right in there and, yeah. and participate. Jump right in. Yeah, I know. That's, yeah. that's awesome. Okay. Um, written communications. Uh, we have a letter from the Citizens Committee on the Baylands Draft EIR, and let's see, since the chair of that committee is here, why don't we ask her to present. Anya Miller, name was? <laughs> chair of the Citizens Committee on the Baylands DIR <laughs> and due to the hour and uh, everybody being pretty tired I, I don't think I'll read the le letter to into the record I assume it's going to be part of your record mm -hmm. and you know what the issue is uh, that you were kind enough to provide us consultant help pay for it and uh, this really was uh, something we did not expect and we were already really rushing to f try to finish by the deadline that we have on November 22nd. So th we did meet with Mr. Rivas Plata, uh, who gave us a sample of a 
his review of a, uh, some comments. We had a section of nine comments, and he had uh, nine review comments. And so we realized that we really, in order to use his advice, uh, we, we really needed more time to, to consider all of his input and then to, to make changes that we need to make in order to make this a, what we, you want and what we would like to do is, is a proper and effective presentation of, of analysis of the EIRS from a citizen point of view and factually supported. And not talking about the project, but the EIR. So that's that's our request. We absolutely, really need more time. And we were talking about you know really being able to have as much as we feel we need. We could use till March, but I do recognize, and some of us do recognize, and we have other members of the committee here. We have uh, Greg Anderson, Vice Chair. We have Lori Liu, and we have uh, Dave Grimaud. He's still here, who is still working on a, one of the most important sections, which is traffic. And so we just hope that you can understand this need and and to provide I'm not even mentioning dates now, whatever you can give us after all this waiting. So, please. Okay. Thank you. I know, Michelle, you put your name, you'd like to speak to this, and maybe some of the others would like to as well. Okay. Michelle Salmon, Brisbane resident. I am not speaking tonight on behalf of the Open Space and Ecology Committee because we did not have time to agendize this request for an extension. Even though when we originally asked for an extension, we asked for it to be to the end of January because we already knew it was going to take longer than we suspected with or without the help of Mr. Rivas, for which we're very grateful that you approved that. I brought this because I really had the best of intentions of reading part of it during the boring part of the meeting, but there really was no terribly boring part of the meeting except your reports. No, sorry. <laughs> but Thank you. I, I've really listened a lot to everything that Lloyd Zola has said about program EIRs, project uh, EIRs, et cetera, et cetera. And, I believe I'm interpreting what he's saying as, as correctly. And what I hear is that the program EIR becomes the overarching document for which all the subsequent reviews at the project level fall under. If something is not covered in the program <coughs> EIR, because it is certified, then you don't get to address it unless there is a significant change in conditions, at which point then you could, or, and there would be environmental review at the project level, but not at the level that is in the program EIR unless it's already been mentioned in the program EIR. It's complicated. But basically, if you didn't cover it, in the program EIR when you do certify it, and then something comes up later. It has to meet significant threshold levels to be studied at the same level as if it was mentioned in the EIR. If it was mentioned in the EIR, you can ask for further study when you get to the project level, but if it wasn't mentioned, then I believe you have to meet some threshold of of significance. And you can check with your own experts on that. But I've asked the question numerous times now and gotten the same interpretive answer. Um, and you have your own expert right here that you can ask. But all that aside, uh, you know, you know that when you go to certify, you'll get to read these several thousand pages. And then you'll decide, the four of you, or hopefully by that time there'll be five of you. Um, whether or not it's adequate. Because at some point, you will have to certify 
you will most likely have to certify an EIR for anything that happens out there, whether it's this EIR or some other EIR or something else we write. So the question is, would you rather do the work or would you rather have your Citizens Committee do the work and your Open Space and Ecology Committee do the work and the people of Brisbane who care very much do the work to the best of their ability, as thorough as possible, before you ever crack the book on it? That's really the question. And if the answer is yes, then you need to give us more time. And if the answer is no, have at it. It's all yours. And if anything's left out, we'll have to deal with it over the next 50 years, because that's how long this document and this project could take to build out. So I don't ask lightly, because I know people have been waiting a very long time to get it done. And believe me, I'd really like to be done with it. I'd like to throw it out the window. Because <laughs> I'm really tired of reading it, and I haven't read it nearly as, as, as studiously as Barbara has and some of the other members of the committee because I just haven't had the time or sometimes the stomach for it because it's really a difficult document to read. I'll give you an example of how you get derailed when you're reading the document. The section we did last week was um, biological resources and in paragraph two sentence two, they talk about reconnaissance level field surveys. And I'm like, hmm, I hate that word. I hate that expression. And the next paragraph, it goes down to say, on March 2nd, 2007, June 20th, 2007, April 20th, 2011, and April 19th, 2013, reconnaissance level field surveys covering the entire project site the entire project site were conducted by ESA biologists. The 2007 survey concerned, confirmed that site conditions in terms of biological resources remain consistent with no appreciable changes in the distribution or condition of existing habitats between 2007 conditions and 2011, and also consistent with earlier site surveys described above. That is four days two in 2007 and two in 2011 to survey all of the entire site for all biological aspects. I happen to remember 2007 pretty well and 2011 pretty well. It's kind of a curse. Um, so I looked up the rainfall numbers for those years. And in 2007, the average rainfall this is the year, season 2007-2008, um, ended up being 17.5 inches, and in 2011-2012 it was 15.64 inches, which seems pretty much the same, right? For March and April in 2007-2008, the total rainfall was 0.46 inches in March and April combined. That's less than half an inch. For 2011-2012, the total rain for that same period, March and April, was eight and a half inches. So tell me the conditions on the ground were the same. Mm, I don't think so. So, you know, it calls into question that the entire chapter, because they're basing it off of a field reconnaissance survey and a bunch of reports that they did and other people did before them. And, and so that's the kind of detail that you get kind of hung up in when you're going through this. And, you know, they talk about uh, mitigation measures for Ice House Hill, but they don't talk about mitigation measures or, or they're like, well, you know, we're going to move on. We're not going to do anything while the birds are nesting, and then we're going to cut down all the trees. Well, then where are the birds going to go? You don't talk about that, you know. And, and that's just... That's a drop in the bucket compared to, you know, hazards and hazardous materials, traffic, air quality, um, growth inducements. That's this week's chapter. I haven't finished reading yet. And so if you want us to do the kind of job that y you would want, I think we need more time. I mean, it took them how long to produce this document? How long did we wait for it? Base year's 2010. We got it, what, June of 2013? So, what's the hurry? It's up to you, though. I can hear.
hand it to you right now. I'm certainly developing arm muscles from carrying it around. <laughs> Hi, Dave Grimmel from Resident. Uh, so yeah, I'm working on the uh, traffic report right now, and it's it's 150 pages, and it's uh, basically mind numbing. I think would be the best way to describe it. <laughs> A lot of just it's just so much information. I'm not saying this just to complain about it or anything, but it's just. Um, I mean, I can only do a little bit before I just start canceling out. But um, more to the point. I, I think, um, you know, with the additional information that we have with the um, the uh, consultant and his his added insights, uh, I think, I mean, I know on the committee that that I'm running, and my comments from the previous committees I've served on, uh, I'm going to have to go revisit them all, and and make sure that they're they're um, suiting the purpose, I guess. And my point being that I think it's in everyone's interest for us to take the time to do this right so that the people who are having to read this and process it down the line aren't going through a bunch of information that's non-relevant as well as our own time, but, but let's just get it out there and do it right once as with everything, you know, I think that's the best approach. So I'm, I'm uh, seconding Anya's request for additional time on the on the report. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Greg, do you want to talk? No? <laughs> no. Yeah. Yeah. Doesn't matter. Hi, I'm Greg Anderson again, and I still live at 349 San Bruno <laughs> Avenue. <laughs> I'm still the uh, Vice Chair for the DEI study. Um, we started this approximately 102 days ago. We have 23 people on our list who put in a lot of time. Um, and on this 102nd-ish day, approximately 10 of those are still extremely active in studying the sections of the DEIR that they signed up for and the additional sections of the DEIR that they didn't sign up for. <laughs> um, we have utilities and cumulative impacts for our next meeting, which I think will go pretty quickly. But after that, we still have traffic and circulations, hazard and hazardous materials, and biological resources, the weight of which was too ponderous to be analyzed in the time that we allotted for those uh, chapters. So the amazing thing about this process is even after spending around 102 days studying this huge document and uh, reading through most of it, that we still have 10 people who are actively working on it. <laughs> and the predominant opinion of those 10 people is that they need another 120 days to continue to do an adequate job. Um, my personal opinion is that perhaps 120 days is too long. Uh, but certainly if we have to stop in 18-ish days, um, then our work will be somewhat uh, incomplete. I, I don't think that the consultant is necessarily the uh, most important aspect to the extension. Uh, his comments were very valuable, um, but I felt that they were similar to what the um, consultants who prepared the report will tell us, mm -hmm. um, you know, when we hand it in, as, as terms of uh, no applicability of comments and so on and so forth. So, I am very concerned with Michelle's point that we should cover everything that needs to be covered. Um, but as E. E. Cummings said, if I had more time, I would have written a shorter letter. Uh, <laughs> you know, so, some of that time uh, can be pared down after. Uh, you know, some of that volume can be pared down after we turn in the report. So it is a difficult question to say. 
um, how much more time we need. I, I don't feel like a lot of work is going to be done with our current level of exhaustion um, in the holiday period. So I'd like to suggest that um, you know, if we are extended, that we're extended at least 60 days, um, because I think that the, the benefit of a 30-day extension would be very slight. So um, if you have any questions about statistics or numbers or things we haven't done, I'm happy to answer them. But that's most of what I have to say. Okay. Thanks, Greg. Thank you. Laurie. Good evening, Lori Liu. Um, I want to echo the words of um, everyone else who spoke. Um, you know, being on the Citizens Committee is, has been a very arduous task, but an important one. Um, and the way we've organized it, um, just to give you some idea of our process, is that, you know, we have divided ourselves into the different chapters, and people have signed up to be on those, I guess, subcommittees, you could call them. Um, and we've been meeting or you know, communicating by email um, and coming up with our comments and then presenting them to the group at our meetings. Um, and as Greg mentioned, we still have several really key important topics to cover. Um, and to date, I believe we have over 200 pages of comments on the, on the topics that we've already <coughs> completed. And now that we have this additional, um, you know, uh, consultant time that, you know, that th this that he will be able to review our work and make sure that we're wording it in the most effective way to, to be able to receive comments back. Um, I think that in order to really utilize that service, um, we need more time because what we're going to do with his comments is then we're going to, each, each subcommittee is going to take that back and <coughs> go over his comments and review them and re revise our, our comments based on them and then decide, you know, that that will be what the group um, decides, or, or maybe what the subcommittee will again present it to the entire group. So that whole process is going to take some time. It certainly can't be completed by November 22nd. So I believe that, you know, with the upcoming holidays, we would certainly need through at least the end of January to be able to utilize his comments and complete the the sections that are still yet to be covered. Thanks. Thank you. Um, oh, sure. <coughs> Excuse me. Motion to extend the meeting to uh, 1120. 1120. Is there a second? Yeah, I, I need to make it longer than that, Clark. I would just do 1130. Just so you have the time, just so we have to come back. Because you wouldn't want to have to extend it again, which is exactly the comment I was going to make. So be generous if you're going to extend it. Do it through the Ides of March or whatever, because we don't want to come back to you in January and saying we still don't have enough time, which is exactly what happened this time. So be generous. If you're going to do it, be generous about it. And let us have the time that we really need to do it well, so that we don't have to come back and and do this again because we still found more to go through. Thank you. Okay. So you want to stick with your original or want to change it? Yeah, I think I think uh, so. If we'll go to 11:30, if you want. <laughs> okay. okay. That's your second. Mm -hmm. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. Um, we do have kind of a balancing act, and I think we're all very appreciative of the work that the citizens have, have done and are doing, and it's actually crucial to getting a, a product that's going to help us make really wise decisions on the Baylands. Mm -hmm. But there is um, another dimension called the whole litigation sphere. And uh, I'd like our city attorney to address that uh, other side of the pressure that, that the council is under uh, so people can understand that we're in kind of a, a, a pinch here.
Thank you, Mayor and Council. Uh, I'll address it, uh, although some items with respect to litigation, of course, are appropriate for, for closed session rather than open session. But in terms of the, the considerations that the, the Council and, and the City have to, have to look at, uh, I did have a chance to speak with outside Council Margaret Sohagi, who's the sequel Council who's been working with the City uh, on this issue. And the <coughs> issue that the, the Council uh, needs to look at, uh, the other side of it is that there are CEQA guidelines, and generally under the CEQA guidelines, uh, there's the draft EIR that's issued, and then there is a 30 to 60 day comment period that can be extended uh, for unusual circumstances. <coughs> Excuse me. Without a doubt, the complexity, uh, the, the length, the, the issues in this EIR, this draft EIR, provided uh, unusual circumstances that justified the extension of the, the general maximum 60-day period to 120 days. Uh, that was extended on October the 8th for an additional 45 days, again based on the unusual circumstances uh, that stem from the, the complexity of the length and the citizens group looking at the, the issues in, in the draft EIR. Under the, the CEQA guidelines, that, would have, or that extended the, the total time of review to 165 days, which is almost three times the standard provision uh, for review. And then the issue that comes up when it goes that long is that there are several cases where there have been challenges made to the failure of a city to move an EIR forward to issue an environmental review decision uh, within a reasonable period of time because what the courts have said is that the applicant uh, has the right to have the, the, review the review finished and the decision made uh, within a reasonable period of time after the, the application is, is submitted. There is no clear case law on this and certainly the, the council, as I think I discussed at the last continuance, has the ability to continue the, the review period for uh, a period of time based on unusual circumstances. The, the time period that the council is running up against is that, again, under the CEQA guidelines, generally the EIR is supposed to be certified within a year of when the draft EIR is issued. Now, clearly that's not going to happen here, and there's good cause for pushing it past the year. But what the council is faced with is balancing the very legitimate interests that the citizens have uh, in extending the comment period, uh, in dealing with the complexity of the issues with the CEQA guidelines, the case law, and the potential challenge to both the, the EIR and the, the council's action and the city's actions if this is continued for what a court would determine to be an unreasonable time period past the issue and state of the draft EIR. Sure. So then once the draft EIR is done, and the questions are answered, and then you get the EIR, how much time are you going to get to review it? Is that also going to be limited under CEQA law? Because you might want to think carefully about that, too, because that's kind of contradictory to what you said where we, you know, you can wait to um, certify the EIR until you have your project ready, but I don't think that's going to be the case at all. Um, so I'd really like to know, once the EIR is given to the council, how long are they going to have to certify it? How much time are they going to get to work through this several thousand page document and put their stamp of approval on it, whether we have a viable project or not? I mean, do they have to certify it? Can they say no? Well, then what happens? What kind of legal mess is that going to be if already you don't get to take the amount of time you need to do this first part? This is very different than what was said 
you know, a couple months ago, and you said, we can take it, you know, if we need more time, we can extend it. If we need more time, we can extend it. And now you're being told, no, no, you really can't. And so you're thinking that if we need more time, we don't have to ratify, certify the EIR until we're satisfied. Well, maybe that's not the case, is it? So I'd like to hear the opinion on that, too. So you can think about that. What kind of timeline do you really have here? And how much work are you guys going to have to do to certify this document once we get through this part of it? That's a big question, because I don't think you guys are ready to do that. I'll give you a chance to answer, but let Tanya go first. <clears throat> I, I just have one suggestion that you might pursue is uh, uh, the consultant that we met with uh, uh, did say that the there have been cases where the time has been longer because of unusual circumstances, the review time. And I think you should find out, for instance, in the state of California from a clearinghouse or somewhere, uh, just how many cities have taken more than 120 days. I think you need to know that. So, and, and if those cities then were sued, intimidated. Uh, do you want to go ahead? Sure. Um, I think you also need to keep in mind that, you know, by giving us more time, it's not failing to move the project forward. It's actually going to help the council um, down the road by, because, you know, we as citizens are going to be doing a lot of the work that you know, that'll help you and you won't have to do as much work in the future. So, you know, I think that more time now will actually benefit the council future in the future. So, and, and I believe the city attorney said that there's no clear case law um, of any challenges that have been successful. So, you know, it's of course a litigation risk, but it's about what's reasonable under the circumstances. And I, I think based on, you know, the fact that it's a very complex project, and there's this new information, this, this consultant, this new service that we have, that that um, is, a, is a very good factor that justifies more time. Mr. City Attorney, you want to respond to some of those questions? Yeah. In, in terms of the question about how long the, the council has to certify, there's there's no set period that I'm aware of. Uh, again, the, the general rule is that the review of the EIR is supposed to be completed within a year. That clearly is not possible given the, the complexity and, and the issues here. Uh, there would probably be the expectation that the council move uh, expeditiously in reviewing the, the draft EIR and the comments and reaching a, a certification or rejection of the, the final EIR. Uh, but again, I, I can't give you a definite time period. But it would probably be, I think, in terms of a reasonable time period, uh, somewhere between three, three to four months would be my my best estimate. Okay. But, David, I'd like to ask some questions. Uh, w okay. What's the process of rejection? I mean, you know, do you have to have findings and stuff like that if you go through it? Uh, if you either certify it or you don't certify it. But if you don't certify it, don't you have to have some findings on why you didn't or what? Yep. If you if you don't certify it, then it's generally because you find that it hasn't disclosed all the significant impacts and there's more work that needs to be done. So you would remand it back or request additional studies that would then come back to you. And then at some point, you would need to make uh, a decision in terms of whether you are going to, to certify or, or not certify the final EIR. And so if you didn't certify it, you wouldn't need findings to do that? If you did certify it? If you did not. If you did not. Yes, if you, if you, you did not certify it, then you would need findings You'd, you would basically have to find that the report continued to fail to disclose all of the significant uh, environmental impacts from the project. I see. But it's not a constant going back and forth and going back and forth. Oh, it didn't certify. Oh, you got to find this. you got to do that. At some point, there's a cutoff or what? Mm -hmm. no. I guess. 
at, 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 at some point, generally, what's happened in cases is where it's gone back and forth and back and forth. Generally, the, the, the developers at one point will decide that they don't think they're going to get approval from the council, and at that point is generally when litigation ensues. Okay. That's a question. Yeah, yeah, and that, that's, that's one of the questions, yeah, that I, that, yeah, I wanted to just kind of you know, understand is just, you know, that there are other opportunities to get more information, you know, before we would certify the EIR, and that, uh, you know, if we weren't satisfied, we would continue with the, the process of, of, of gathering more information to ensure ourselves that that whatever mitigation efforts were needed for a particular uh, part um, were satisfied. That's correct. The I mean the processes are somewhat different. So there's now the draft EIR that has been issued, and the the citizens groups are of course commenting on the draft EIR, those comments will be given to the city's uh, EIR consultant who will review them. Uh, they will become part of the final EIR and there will be written comments, uh, written responses to each of those comments in the final EIR. Once the comment period ends, whether it's uh, in, a, in a month or, or, or six, 60 days, uh, that terminates the formal comment period on the draft EIR, but any additional comments can continue to be submitted. They would become a part of the record. They would be submitted to the Planning Commission and to the, the Council for review and consideration. The difference would be that they would not be part of the final EIR, uh, the, the record uh, that would go with the final EIR, and there would not necessarily be written comments from the consultant to those additional comments, but they would be before the council, before the planning commission could be considered. And if in fact either the, the planning commission or council felt that any of those comments raised significant issues that had not been addressed, then the council would have the right to request additional information as a result of those comments. Okay. And then, you know, um, you know, right now we have the developer's specific plan, we have city's alternative, we have the um, alternative energy uh, before us, but you know we've talked about how you know eventually the what might go before the voters as as a plan could be completely different. So how does you know so if we're kind of taking this information and we're creating perhaps a final plan, uh, you know that then also um, could create opportunities to require more information as far as environmental impacts are concerned, correct? If, if I understand your question, at, at some point the, the council will consider and uh, will either uh, approve, modify, or reject the, the current specific plan, uh, and if it's rejected, then may develop uh, a separate s a specific plan that approximates what the, the council and the community is willing to, to accept in terms of any potential use of the Baylands. If that specific plan uh, is within what's been studied in the EIR, then you wouldn't have to go back and do a, a new EIR. If it was something that was different, if there were new environmental impacts, then it would require either uh, a supplement or some additional study so that everything that's part of whatever plan the council approves does have full environmental review. Okay. All right. And then um, the, the last thing, um, uh, you know, talking about precedent. And so um, uh, we're in this stage of, you know, right now we're at uh, 165 days. Um, do you know of any uh, uh, projects where the, that uh, amount of time has been given for a draft EIR and that there was potential litigation um, because of delay or it just it, it was beyond uh, you know the the kind of standard uh, time frame? 
that is expected. I, I think that there's two different questions uh, with respect to the question of whether I'm aware of any extensions that have been uh, more than 165 days. I, I am not. Okay, yeah. And in speaking to Margaret Sohagi, uh, the, the outside CEQA consultant, she was not aware of any, any review periods that have gone beyond 165 days. However, we have not done, certainly I have not done an exhaustive search of everything uh, in, in the state. So it certainly, it, it could be possible. Uh, again, Ms. Ohagi has been practicing SQL law for, for many, many years and uh, probably would be aware of, of anything, certainly that, that reached uh, the level of, of litigation or that was uh, a large Southern California project, and she was not aware of anything that exceeded that 165 days. The litigation that, that's ensued has generally not been based on the, the review period. Uh, it's been based either on processing after the review period, uh, on failure to, to process, on other procedural issues that are involved in the secret review process. The general doctrine that's come out of those cases is that an applicant does have a right to have uh, a review processed in a, in a timely and reasonable manner consistent with the city's obligations to do a thorough environmental review. So there's been no litigation I'm aware of that has stemmed directly from an issue of extending uh, a time period for review. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> if the EIR gets certified, can we still reject the project? If the EIR... If it doesn't meet our general plan, it doesn't meet the community's expectations. Yeah, the I mean, you can't you can't accept the project or can't approve the project without the EIR being being certified. However, the approval of the of the project uh, would not be mandated. By the certification of the of the EIR, uh, generally it's preferable to to look at both the EIR and and the project uh, at the at the same time. So you're not certifying an EIR in a vacuum without the project coming forward, so you know exactly what it is that you're that you're looking at. Um, let me, John, do you have a thought on? Um. That's normally the case. You um, typically might not want to certify the final EIR until you have a project that you're approving because, for example, if there are overriding findings, typically findings why you want to approve a project despite their significant unavoidable impacts are typically tied to a project. So it's unclear if you're going to certify an EIR and say, because you really don't know what the overriding findings are because you don't have a pro if you don't have a project you want to approve at that particular moment so normally they are tied together yeah but it, 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 if I can follow up on that so it would it would be an unusual I think to certify the the EIR and then reject the project the 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 more typical action I think would be to reject both the project and not certify the final EIR at the same time. Yeah, I want to comment on, on, on that too. So. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You're in there first. I think I opened a can of worms here. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's one of those things that, you know, if we don't find or if we find that they have answered or someone has answered the environmental issues but they have submitted a project that does not meet our general plan and so it would be a prohibited use we could still say that we're not going to accept their project unless it fits with our general plan correct well 
that's probably a legal question because I mean they would be putting an application in for a uh, uh, general plan amendment at the same time, right? Just if I understand it correctly, and so. Well, didn't they do that when they submitted the plan? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. They did. Yeah. They did. So, if you were to reject the the proposal, what you'd be rejecting would be the project and the general plan and specific plan that would go along with that that project. You would then have the ability at a future date to look at a, a different specific plan, a different general plan, uh, and a project that would then be in, in compliance with, <clears throat> excuse me, whatever that revised general plan and specific plan would be. And if that was acceptable to the council, then at that point you could certify uh, the EIR and approve the specific, specific plan and general plan amendments based on that revised project. And that wouldn't be felt to be um, not allowing their plan to be uh, looked at or being slowing it down by doing it in that method since we've already accepted their plan, their proposed plan, even though it didn't meet our general plan guidelines? Y you will need to take action on the submitted plan of the applicant before you can proceed to look at any other plans. Um, and again, of course, without prejudging it, I mean, your role is to, to move ahead and to make a decision on the application, either accepting, modifying, or rejecting as soon as you feasibly can uh, after a rental review is completed. Depending on what action the council takes, you will then either have the option of proceeding uh, with a modified plan, with, with a new plan. Again, it's, it's difficult to predict because at this point it's unknown what the council is going to do exactly with that specific plan as, as submitted. Thank you. No, yeah, you know, and that, <laughs> you know, just for me, you know, where where I stand, I mean, I, you know, to me, the final EIR that I would even consider approving, we are going to vet the what the project is going to be with the community first. So by the time that that final project, whatever it is it will reflect or the EIR will, will respond to all of the environmental issues that are part of that plan that hopefully the majority of the community supports and so you know here you know we have these you know the, these plans that are out there right now but those aren't the ones that are going to be those those aren't the ones that are going to go before the voters there's going to be a plan that eventually will be um, you know, one that is sustainable, one that has been you know, getting information from whatever you know, means that, that we have planned, like the survey. And so, I, again, I mean, I think uh, whatever that final ER is going to be, it's going to be based upon the community's plan, not uh, what we have right now. So, you know, and then after that, you know, if we do certify it, then it goes before the voters, and then the voters decide. Motion to extend the meeting 15 minutes. <laughs> Second. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 <sighs> All right. <clears throat> Yeah. More ways than one. <laughs> How many days call an election? How many days in advance mm -hmm. to call an election? And will that affect the timing on the IR, the certification of it? Yeah, well, um, the staff is working on figuring out all those timelines, and so we're aware of all those complexities. That that dimension anyway and so that's being worked on and so we will have we'll come forward with a proposal for 
how to confront those things. But uh, in the meantime, we need to um, make a decision about um, ex uh, whether or not to extend the comment period, and if so, for how long. And then we need to, to do it in a way which is, you know, formally correct, and I understand that we need um, another meeting in which to do that, but we can indicate our preferences this evening. Is that correct, Mr. Attorney? Mayor, that's correct. The, <laughs> the issue tonight is on the, it's on the written comment, uh, and it's not on the action agenda, so the council under the Brown Act wouldn't be able to make a final decision tonight. It could certainly, as it's been doing, discuss the issue and indicate its preference. What would happen would be the matter would be put on the agenda at the next meeting, December, I'm sorry, November the 18th, for the council to, to take action uh, and to provide further opportunity for public comment uh, from anyone who wished to, to address the, the issue before the council made its final decision. Okay. Yeah, I have a question for the staff. Sure. Um, so when when we um, uh, approved the extra funding for Terry, uh, I forgot his last name. Uh, Rivas Plata. Rivas Plata to work with um, the OSEC, work with OSEC. We also agreed to have his services be applied to um, the the. Citizens com uh, Committee, um, and we um, approved for him to look at uh, their comments, and, and and he was supposed to um, at least the guy the guidelines that we had given was that he would look at those comments and perhaps restructure them so that they were appropriate for a draft EIR, but we didn't know the significance of the volume of of information, so that's so um, Terry's Terry's um, I don't know what I guess maybe his guidelines now have changed, and so if you could talk uh, uh, about that change, I can read it to you. Okay. Okay. So his scope of work is that uh, he will provide marginal notes regarding whether the comment focuses on the EIR and not simply the project is pertinent to the project and is clearly written. Um, he adds that although we know that the discussion with the City Council included our potentially rewriting the comments, we do not propose to do so, nor do we propose to undertake any independent research related to the comments. We will provide objective assistance to the committees as to the form of their comments, not, the sub not their subjective content. Um, and they, he budgeted uh, 12 hours of his firm's time, two of his, and then 10 of an associate for each committee. So 24 hours altogether, 12 for each committee. Okay. And, and then, so, um, and he, he feels that once he gets that information, that it would, he could do it in several days. Um, so that, and he would, I guess, jump on it, you know, fairly quickly. That's my understanding. He, he, he uh, wrote me an email today indicating that he would have comments back within three, three working days. From the time that he received the um, the comments from the committees. Okay. All right. So, what's your pleasure? Well, I I think we should support our committees as best we can, and um, give them as much time as we can possibly squeak out of the process, and so. I would like to bring it back at our next meeting and and make that decision on what kind of time frame. I agree with that. Um, yeah. So you want to you, you leave the leave that the number of days open, or is that what you're thinking now, or or would you do want well, to give some advice on that, or what's the what's your thinking? Well, I, I personally have um, great difficulty setting a time frame that would put um, all our citizens' holidays in jeopardy. And by that, I mean putting a deadline before those holidays appear. Because I think that 
that is unfair. I know that we're looking at, you know, ways to um, extend the time so that we get the best product, but I think that setting a deadline that is before the holidays would be grossly unfair to our citizens that are working so diligently. And while we can't make any specific recommendations right now, that would be my recommendation. Yeah, you know, um, you, know you want to support the folks that are doing the work. And, um, you know, because the stuff that they're doing is, I mean, they're doing a lot of the heavy lifting for us right now. Um, and, of course, you know, maybe the plans that are out there right now won't be the final plan that, that's before us, but a lot of those things that, you, that you're all studying will be relevant to whatever that final plan is. Um, you know, we also have, you know, that, that, that legal issue that, that I think we need to, to have a little bit more discussion amongst ourselves um, because we are uh, looking at, um, you know, going beyond a certain time frame that, um, as far as we know, you know, no other city has gone. And so, um, sounds like Star Trek. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so, you know, we have to, I mean, it, you know, you, you, you want to find that balance between, you know, giving you guys enough time and making sure that we don't put ourselves in, in, in legal hot water, too. And so, um, you know, I just hope that, that you respect that, you know, that we are really looking at it and, um, you know, try and, try and do the best, not only, you know, be right by you guys, but also, you know, protecting the city, too. So when are we going to discuss the time? Yeah, right. Because I'm not hearing anything other than the extended time and is what's the proposal. I mean, because really is what it is, is, is okay, you know, certainly we want to support our committees, you know, and our, our citizens' committee, you know. I mean, I don't think really that's ever been the question. The question is, we know that at some point we've got to end it, regardless whether they're finished or not. You know, we're going to have to... And the onus is on us, so it's kind of a crapshoot. Well, you know, so we could rolling out uh, the time, you know, with the with the attorney, you know. Well, the, we could do something like um, they perhaps extend it an, an additional 30 days and work hard to try and and, and wrap it up if, it, if it's possible. Um, I, I, yeah, but uh, you know and. See if we need to uh, address it at another time, if that's not appropriate. I mean, I think that 30 days would help the committee, whether it puts a strain on the time frame or not. I, I think any time at all would be a help, but I, I, I just think that's wrong. Just think I, it's you know, wrong. I, yeah, I, you know, uh, if, but we also know of. of them potential legal uh, challenges that could be before us too, and we um, we don't want to put the city in a bad spot either. I understand that. Um, I think we since you may I uh, since you are going to not formally vote on the extension until the 18th, and our last meeting is the 19th. We, we need a firm idea today whether you are extending at all that's the the basic thing we need to know that because you know we we are not going to be finished even on the 19th as it is mm -hmm. <laughs> so it it really is important to know that you are definitely going to not be intimidated at this point by but by uh, but giving us definitely the idea that we're going to have an extension, and then the, the time you decide next. But we need to know now that you're going to extend. <coughs> yeah, I, I, I think that um, from what I hear from my colleagues, um, there's a sentiment uh, to extend, um, for sure 30 days. Um, 
and maybe more. Um, and so uh, my sense is that I'm testing you out now. Give me feedback. Uh, my sense is that the 30-day extension is something that you could get a lot of support for from the council. Um, maybe if the final further research that's involved, such as, you know, are there any precedents, are there any real legal downsides to this that we really ought to know about, maybe we can consider, you know, going to 60, which would, you know, be in the January. But we need to have a kind of a legal basis for that, then we want uh, our attorney to be able to say, okay, these are the findings by which we could do our best to, you know, justify that, make it legally defensible, let's say. Um, so anyway, that's that's my sense of the conversation. Uh, have I got it? Or? I would agree, yes. As, okay. as much as we can agree at this point without it being an agenda, yes. Mm -hmm. Let's plan for 30 then, given feedback from the attorney on what you can go another 30 or whatever. Mm -hmm. The direction clear, Mr. Attorney? It is. Okay. Should we make a motion or we just leave it at that? Can't. No. <laughs> no motion since this was on for, for discussion of the make sure. communication. <laughs> yes, thanks. Okay, that's what I thought you'd say. Just want to make right. sure. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Okay, so you heard the resolution? Yeah. Okay, um, we have just a couple other things that will go in about a couple of seconds. Um, you get get more or communications, yeah. Uh, we have a letter from the Human Rights Campaign, which just gives us our score, um, our proposed score. We have a letter from the mayors against the illegal guns, and then they've sent us a book, uh, which I'm happy to share with all my colleagues. Reducing gun violence in America. Yes. I'll have Sherry uh, distribute it among the council, um, and uh, then uh, we've had a, 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 a distribution of uh, city selection committee coming up in December, and there are lots of open spots, and we can agendize that for next time and talk about it. But just want to make sure everybody pays attention to that because there are a lot of interesting opportunities there. Mm -hmm. um, and then we had all kinds of emails, which are sort of under uh, written communications on the skate park, on the pool hours, uh, on you know, support of the, the uh, charrette, the Crocker Park, and we've had a couple of communications also on the issue we just uh, resolved as much as we could this evening, uh, especially from uh, former Mayor Clara Johnson. And so now we move, unless there are any other points to be made to oral communications? Michelle. Michelle Salmon, Brisbane resident. I will make this short because I want to go home as badly as you do. I really think that tonight was an eye-opener in many ways about the whole process of the draft EIR, the EIR, the project, the certification, et cetera, and the amount of time it takes to call for an election and a lot of other things. And I am really concerned that we do not have a good timeline on this and a good scenario for rights of refusal should this not be acceptable to us. And I am gravely concerned about that, way more than I already was when I called you all today. And I think that you really need to sit down and get some honest answers and some honest timelines about how it really works from step A to step Z so that we don't get screwed. Because right now I'm looking like we're going to get screwed. So please, please sit down and get the truth, the real timeline from the best experts that you can find and not just our internal ones. Because I am now really, really concerned. Because we've been all like, oh, we can just ask for more time, we can do more time. And apparently that is not the case. So I hope all of your eyes were really opened tonight by some of the things that your new city attorney said to you 
uh, about this process and the timelines involved. So I think you need to talk to your consultants directly and uh, find out what the real situation is. Thank you. And thank you for all your indulgence tonight and being able to hear what we had to say. Thank you. You know, thank everybody for contributing. and We're here to do the best we can. Any other oral communications? Seeing no uh, other requests, we will adjourn in memory of Billy Kosick, right? Kosick. Kosick, 91 years old, long-time resident. All in favor of adjourning? Aye. 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 We got it. Thank you.